say that if there is anybody in the building not a little anxious, a little nervous, you weren't listening to the gospel. This passage in the gospel begins when Jesus says, do not think that I have come to undo the law, I have come to fulfill the law. Now what we just heard was a part of Matthew's Gospel in which Jesus is bringing the law to fulfillment. That's the part that makes us nervous. Made me nervous to read it. <laughs> Some of us are guilty of all those. So what could Jesus possibly be saying to us saying that we cannot even be angry? That if we look at another with lust in our heart, we're just as guilty as one who commits adultery? Hmm. This is a large passage. We've only heard part of it. It goes on and says, you have heard it said, there will be an eye for an eye, or a tooth, or a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, turn the other cheek. See, it doesn't get easier as you read on in the fifth chapter of Matthew. You have heard it said to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I say to you, love your enemy. See, it gets harder and harder and harder. Here's the problem. Jesus was speaking to people who had been told for generations of time that they would earn God's favor by obedience to the law. We've talked about that a lot because the readings were epiphany. The Pharisees kept, keep stepping in and out of those readings. And as we read about the Pharisees, that was their business. They, were, they were, had good intentions of teaching people how to please God was through the law. And if we could get the law right, God would be pleased. Now Jesus comes along and says, I'm not going to undo any of those laws. I'm going to carry them a step further. You know, I was thinking about the law, any law. I think the law gives us the bottom line. And we try to obey the law to the bare minimum. Driving down here on Highway 127, the speed limit is 55. I drove 60. Why did I do that? Because I was just probably kind of obeying them all. I wasn't breaking the law enough for a patrolman to stop me. You know, I pay my taxes every year, but my accountant works hard to make sure that I pay the least I can possibly pay. And, we, and if you think about it, that's what we do with the law. We want to know the law so we can do the least we can do to stay within the law. That's the nature of the law. I'm grateful for the law. You know, I don't want there to be no law so that someone can barge into my house freely or steal my car or whatever. The law is good for us if we're going to be a civilized society. But we have a tendency to want to know the law so that we can do the least possible about the law. The disciples were always asking questions. Love your neighbor as yourself, said Jesus. Well, who is our neighbor? We don't want to waste a lot of love on somebody that we don't think is our neighbor. It's like the kids I used to teach in eighth grade history. They were always saying, is this going to be on the test? I don't want to learn more than I have to. 
It's not going to be on the test. I don't want to be learning something that I don't need. We're all like that. Jesus knew that. That we will hear the law and we will try to understand it just so we can obey it with just enough. We'll love our neighbor as ourselves if somebody will tell us who our neighbor is. And Jesus says, everybody's your neighbor. Everybody is your neighbor. There's no easy way to do it. So what is Jesus saying in this hard, hard reading? I think what Jesus is saying is, if you want to be obedient to the law, the whole law, the spirit of the law, I'll tell you how to go the whole way. The law says, don't be an adulterer. But I'm going to tell you that if you want the spirit of that law, the whole law, then you shouldn't be committing adultery in your imagination either, in your heart. That's what Jesus meant. There's a law that demands of us the whole thing. Like love your neighbor. Everybody's your neighbor. You have heard it said to love your neighbor but hate your enemy. Jesus says you want to know the whole law? You can't hate anybody. That's the whole law. Jesus says, um, the Old Testament says an eye for an eye. This is revenge, you know. You punch me and I punch you. And you punch me again and I punch you. It's how the world operates. I, you probably noticed that, except now we punch with dangerous weapons. You do that. It's kind of amazing. You know, when you look at the world and its history unfolding, you kill 500 of my people, so I'm going to kill 600 of your people. That's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We still operate that way in the highest levels of government around the world. And Jesus says, if you want to obey the law to its fullest, the whole law, if somebody punches you, turn the other cheek. Go ahead and let them punch you there. If somebody sues you for your coat, instead of battling it out in court, give him your coat and give him your second coat as well. That's the whole law. Now here's the good news. None of us can obey the whole law. None of us can obey the law in that fullness. None of us can say anger never comes up. Are we doomed? No, because if we think it's the law that's going to get us into the gates of God's pleasure, we're lost. It can't do it. That's what Jesus is saying. The whole law, what we figured out is the bottom line. Here's what you have to do. Oh, okay, if I have to do that, then I don't have to do this? Right. So, uh, I have to love you, but I don't have to be kind to you. No, that's not right. The law is big. The law of God is beyond human capability. So are we just lost? This whole part of Matthew's Gospel ends with these words. So, be ye perfect as God is perfect. And I don't believe that Jesus meant that we somehow are going to be able to live into the fullness of the law. What Jesus, I pray, meant, be perfectly you as God is perfectly God. That means be aware 
of the fullness of the law. You're human. We're all human here. Are we going to be lost because we get angry? No, but we're not going to forget that law. Don't be angry. Don't call your brother a fool. Don't call anybody a fool. I, I want to say, when you're surrounded by fools, <laughs> there, you see, you just can't do it. <laughs> We're caught. We cannot be redeemed by the law. But I have to know this law, and so do you. I have to know, no, that's not how we evaluate people. That's not the way the whole law is supposed to operate. It goes over and above the bottom line. Over and above the minimum human behavior. Every time. Jesus brought that to our attention in a staggering way in the Sermon on the Mount. Intentionally. That our imagination can lead us into sin. Yes, that our getting anger, anger can lead us into sin. Yes, all of that. My desire for revenge can lead us into sin. Yes, we have to be aware of the fullness. See, that's what Jesus meant when he said, I've come to fulfill the law. The old law gave the bottom line. The part you could dance around like my kids in school. Don't learn too much, just get the test done. We're just like that. What can I get away with? That's what I did on the way down here. What can I get away with? <coughs> so there you have it. Jesus talks about a law this big. And we're always trying to write laws this big so that we can manage them and get away with as much as we can get away with. So be ye perfect means if you can be perfect like God, like God is perfect, God is self-knowing. God, the creator of the law, not laws, but the law, the law of law the law of love, out of which all things were created. God knows God. And Jesus is suggesting that if we can know ourselves, especially now as followers of Jesus who just laid that on us, if we can know that, we'll be perfectly ourselves, knowing what we're capable of if we just give ourselves permission to live at the bottom line. Try living our lives at the fullness of the law. We can never make it, or at least I can. But we can use that as our measure, the fullness of the law. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing at the power of God's Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.